All right, let's continue with the Chip8 emulator development here in C and SDL2. I believe where I left, where I list, where I last left off. <laughs> yeah, we're drawing the the IBM logo here. Just got tongue tied for a second. So we're emulating. I, I don't know around six or seven instructions. We got the display working, the DXYN instruction, which is I think just the hardest one that there is, pretty much. Just to get things displaying correctly, we're displaying sort of outlines here for a pseudo pixel effect and it's displayed correctly it's ratioed all right so i'm just going to go ahead and try to implement the rest of the instructions that we aren't currently doing we do have the jump instruction but one way to uh one find out what we aren't implementing and two find out what isn't being implemented correctly um, is why we have some test roms so yeah i still have the the bond coder test and the test opcode one so i can try out a couple of those to see what they do or look like so if we say the BC test here, it may just fail immediately. So we have E and, is that RF? 3RF or something? I don't, that's very hard for me to read. Or is that like a C? I don't really know what that is. <laughs> Obviously it's an error though. And I, I know this, the E is the for error. And at least it's using a 35, so a 3000 series. We'll say opcode there, that's unimplemented. Uh, the F, F is unimplemented, F3, F4, but the jumps are good, so it does go to an infinite loop after it determines that you haven't implemented something. So, okay, probably has a check around one of these to see if this worked or not. Okay, so we know the 3000 and the F1000 series aren't working for that one. What do we have for the test opcode? That just runs through and says sort of which category or class of opcodes is working, it looks like. And then infinite loops at the end. So AX doesn't appear correctly, even if we are implementing that. I forget if we are. But we know the 3X is not working. And what, what is interesting about this one is that these all say OK, and they're not implemented. So eh, maybe not the best coding in this one, or just the, the checks for it aren't fully correct. But that's why we have our, our debug output in the background. I don't know. But anyway, I'll probably go in order. So other than like calling and returning from subroutines, which neither of these seem to test, I'm not sure, but I think some of them do call and return from subroutines. But other than that, we can test. Yeah, the test opcode sort of goes in order. So we can just kind of go down the list here in a, yeah, an ascending order and see what we need to implement or not. So I'm not calling machine code instruction. I think I have unimplemented for that, but we'll see. And I believe I have one and two. So we can just start going down the condition list here with three XNN and just go on fourth down the list. We'll just do that for this video, I think. So what all do we have implemented? We have zero. We only have these two. So I'm not checking if NNN is not equal to blank. I guess we could, I can just add that in here. So if, uh, if chip eight instruction, well, otherwise it would be zero NNN. I mean, how could you tell if it's NNN or not? <laughs> I'm thinking I could just check if that's greater than zero, but maybe there's an instruction at zero. I don't know, maybe not. We'll just say else, we're not gonna do anything. Unimplemented invalid opcode, maybe NNN. I don't know. And NNN is for calling a machine, machine code routine for RCA 1802, which I am not, I am not uh, emulating that. We're just doing a basic chip eight abstract machine here. So we do have one and two, we don't have three. So I'll start at three and just go down the list. So zero X zero three, if we see here, we have three X NN. that is the only sort of 3000 hex opcode here. So 3xnn is checking if vx equals nn, and it will skip the next instruction. So this is for jumping or branching conditions. If vx equals nn. Usually the next one is a jump to skip a code block. So you had something like, uh, I'm trying to think in assembly. That would probably help explain this. So yeah, I'll just say check. Check if vx equals nn. If so, skip the next instruction. Yes, okay. This could be implemented like, um, I mean, it's a bytecode, so maybe like assembly, if you have like a compare, an x86 LAN, we'll say compare AX to 10 or something, and we can have like a jump 
a jump equal, or in this case, it skips if they are equal. So this, this would be like a jump not equal to some other label. We'll say false, or we'll say not equal. And you'd have some code down here. You'd have a label that has not equal, and you'd have, you'd have the not equal code <laughs> that runs here. And if this was false, then it wouldn't skip. It would go straight on, and we'd have the equal code here. So this would be like a a true condition, this would be like a false condition, although in this case that's kind of confusing because it's not equal. So I'll just get rid of that. But that's kind of how that would work in sort of an assembly sort of way, but we're doing it at a higher level, more like C, where it'd be like if, like they had on the, the wiki page, if vx equals nn, and this code block would be ran, so it would skip the not equal, which would be like a jump somewhere else. It would run the code directly after that, and that would correspond to the code in this body, sort of like, like C code. Otherwise, it'd be not equal and we'd jump to that. So it's a little bit opposite, kind of, from how it looks, but that's how it could be implemented or thought of. Um, but okay, this is simple enough. If we want to skip something, how would we skip an instruction? Well, we're getting the next instruction or data or what have you from the program counter, which is gotten from the chip 8 RAM. We're using the program counter to get the next two bytes for the next opcode. And we can skip an instruction by skipping the next opcode. And since we're already incremented here, the next go around, the PC would be that opcode. But if we want to skip the next instruction, we're already incremented and pointing at the next instruction. We can just increment PC again. So the program counter goes beyond that and we'll run the next code. So we can skip the next instruction just by incrementing the program counter so that the next opcode will be after the instruction to run. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, we'll just increase it by two. Skip um, skip next opcode slash instruction. All right, and we'll do that. And I'll put it up here in debugging as well. Except we'll add printf and it will say, we'll do similar to my comment here, check if v x, well, I'll just do that. Check if vx equals nn, which would be 0.02x. So I'll also, I'll just put the values here like I was doing before. This would be 0.02x as well. Actually, I can, yeah, I'll do it like this. I was like, do I want to do vx equal nn and then do this equals, like one equals each other in this, or just do them next to each other as separate? We'll just do, I'm already going with this, we'll do this. Check if vx, which is going to be this value in the data register, if it equals nn, which will be this value. Uh, skip next instruction if true. Okay. So we'll try that and we will do, am I passing in chip eight as a pointer? I am, okay. Chip eight instruction dot X, chip eight V offset by instruction dot X. If it equals NN, which is chip eight instruction NN. So, okay. Well, we'll make the debug there. I'll run the test op code just because it has more output here. So 3x is now okay. I think it was um, no before. Okay, so 362b would be, I think, the first one here. So checking if vx, which is 6, which will be 2b because that was set here. So if that equals nn, which is 2b, which is that value, and that is true. So it should skip the next instruction at DAB4, which would be at 266 normally for the program counter, because it increments by, increments by two every time. But see, here it incremented by four. So we know it did increment again from 264 to 268 instead of 266. So that looks like that executed correctly. And then it draws, it probably draws an okay or not there. So it probably compares a uh, jump somewhere for the opcodes to draw an okay or no, maybe, for each one of these. Maybe that's how this ROM works. But okay, I know 4x is wrong, but <laughs> we have the opcode there unimplemented, but it says it's okay, so that's all right. That at least kind of sort of verifies that the three, the 3000 and hex thing is working. 
So that's all right. I think the next one will be four because there's only one of those. So four X in N if the X not equal, skip the next instruction if it doesn't equal, okay. So similar to the last one, just sort of the opposite. If VX not equal in N. And three, I'm not even doing the check, so I don't know, my brain is like working ahead of myself. Just increment it. <laughs> I don't even have the if condition. Wow, I am out of it today, sorry about that. If the value in uh, the VX register, which is, yeah, V offset by X, if that equals, then we want to increment. I was like, where's the condition? I didn't even do it yet. <laughs> I, I worked it out in my head, but I didn't, I didn't write it down. That's okay. That's okay. That'll be a one line change either way. If this doesn't equal, then we'll skip. So this would be like, you know, NC you have if VX not equal NN, and then the assembly version would be sort of, we'll just say we'll compare AX to 10 again, jump equal um, is equal. And this would be code for not equal. And we'd have that is equal label down somewhere. So if it's not equal, then it would skip the is equal code and it would run this code for this condition. If it is equal, then it'd go and run the other one. So that's kind of, yeah, how I like to think of it. Can't believe I did not <laughs> include that. And it still works, so I'm going to say, eh. Maybe there should be like two or three checks per instruction in the in the test ROMs. That would be nice. So you can check if you're not doing anything and it still works. But that's all right. Let's just copy what they have here and we'll say just not equal. We'll just do that. All right. And it looked like there's another one as well that we can just put here for a conditional. And then we'll check. Skips the next instruction if VX equals VY. All right, similar enough. 5xy0. Okay. 5xy0. And there's only one 5x instruction. So I can probably assume that we're only going to be doing that. Just for a laziness. I should check 5xy0. Like, I should probably check if n is 0 here to determine if it is this. So I guess I can do that. Um, and if not, then it's not implemented. So let's say if not equal zero, then break, <laughs> it's not implemented. Say wrong, unimplemented opcode. Well, that's not really an opcode, right? It's just wrong. So we'll say wrong opcode, okay. Otherwise, well, we can do the same thing here. And I'll write the comment here, check if VX equals, check if VX equals VY, right? Yes. Skips the next instruction if it equals VY, all right. Uh, if so, skip the next instruction. All right, so this we just see if the data at VX does not equal the data at VY, which would be Chip 8v offset by instruction dot y. Simple enough. But I don't know if I want to put in like these guard clauses everywhere, because otherwise I'd have to put it, you know, for all of these as well. So eh, I don't know. I'll leave it in for that, I guess, because it explicitly says n is zero. It's it's a give or take. Is it really important? Eh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Check if VX equals VY, which will be percent X, so 2X. So we'll have X offset by X, and we'll do Y offset by Y. Y and chip 8 V. Let's put this on the next line. Offset by Y. Okay. So that should be 3, 4, and 5 done. Yep, which is not too bad. Assuming I typed it in, and I did. So we should have those done that we can look at. Three, four, five says no. Oh, maybe it was not right. 
Am I getting my data values wrong? Possibly. So we have four there, we can check. Check if v5-2a does not equal nn-2a. Skip if true. And it does equal, so that's false, so it goes on. So 4x is okay. Check if v5-2a equals v6-2b. Skip if true. They don't equal, so it goes on... Oh, I'm not doing that correctly, okay. Now that is true, so it did skip the next one. But it says that that's wrong, because it put a no. Okay. Maybe I got my instruction backwards. <laughs> so 5 is 2a and 6 is 2b. Were those set up correctly back here somewhere? Probably up here. Set 5 to 2a and 6 to 2b. So those are set correctly. But okay, check if v5 equals v6. Okay, so it says that's wrong, so let's look at that again. Because I probably did that incorrect. That's why I'm trusting the test wrong. Yep, I put not equal, that's why. It skipped it anyway, but that's why. Okay. <laughs> so if they do equal, then add to. Here I had if they equal. That's okay. That's why I have debug output, so I know that uh, my logic's wrong, but the debugging is not. So that's always good. Hey, and then 5 says okay. All right, so we got that one. Hunting around in here is not great. I could make this more readable, probably. Maybe more vertically instead of horizontally inclined. Maybe. But these do equal, so it does skip the next instruction. Goes to 2a. Uh, it shouldn't go to 2a, right? Shouldn't it go to... Because 8 increased by 2 is A, but it should go directly to here, I would think. Seems like it's not skipping. I don't think that's correct. Let's see, does BC test give a different answer here? A different error code? That looks like the same error code. Let's see 5 in there. Okay. Let's see, how am I doing my debugging? Because I do want that to work first. This is correct, I believe. I just don't think my debug output is correct. And it's probably because I'm printing before I do any of these. So PC is 2. Let's see, it, it might be correct. I am printing minus 2. Because we pre-incremented it. So this would be the true first address. And if we increment it again and it was true, then the next one should be, it should be four ahead, should it not? For those? But some of them should only be two ahead. Hmm. I may be overthinking this and I'll cut this out of the video if it's all wrong. That's fine. I think I'm just printing these wrong in some situations. Because if it did skip, well, this would not have skipped actually. This is not true, so it would go on, but for 4, let's just verify this, because I probably just read this wrong, because I'm getting dyslexic. <laughs> 2a does not equal 2a, skip if true. That's not true, so it doesn't. Check if these two equal, that is true, so it should go by 4. So this goes by 4. This goes by 2. And this is not true, so it only goes by two. Okay, okay, I was reading it correctly, or incorrectly. See here, this is false, so it only goes by two. Yeah, that's, I'm doing it correctly. I can't read my screen, sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes I get code dyslexia, I swear. It's not, it's not a condition. Okay, let's just move on from there, from those mishaps. <laughs> let's go to six, if we're not doing it yet. I think we are doing six, set VX to NN. We are doing six already, and seven. We don't have to worry about those. So we can go right on to eight, assignment, vx equals vy. Set vx to the value of vy. That's easy enough. We can do some, uh, some ALU ops, we'll say. So that is eight, x, y, zero. So set vx equal to vy. So we would set the data at x equal to the data at y. 
easy enough. But just for 8xy0, there's also 8xy1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and e. So we need to switch again. We can switch on the last four bits that determine that. Switch on chip 8 instruction.n. And after that, I'll put the break. So we'll say case where that is 0, we have 8xy0. We can probably just do all these in one fell swoop. Well, let's say we have a default break, and this will be uh, wrong or unimplemented. Okay. Let's just do all of these at once. Case zero, case one would be VX ORed with, so bitwise OR, set VX to VX or VY. We'll do or equal vy, this would be 1, and these will all be similar to how that's laid out, that's easy enough. So we'll have a 2, and 8xy2 is and equal, so we set the vx and vy, bitwise and. Okay, and we got three. And three is X or exclusive or, so VX exclusive or VY, set it equal. I like these one line changes, like they're very nice. Don't delete, I wanted to yank and then do that. Yank around paragraph. Okay, what is what is 8xy4 math op plus equal set adds vx2 adds vy2 vx. Okay, vx plus equal vy. The carry flag is set when there is a carry. In this case, it is a carry flag. Set to one when there's a carry. Set to zero when there's not a carry. If it flows over one byte, right? If it goes over 255, I would think. We also have a discrepancy here for that. They were not documented originally. They were dispatched to the 1802's ALU. But they are presumably unintentional, but they are actual functions there. So yeah, yeah, these weren't in the original spec. Which, I don't know, is that on page 17, 18? There we go, this page. So 8xy, it has 0, 1, 2. It does not have 3. It has 4, 5. It does not have 6, 7, or E. <laughs> so 8xy3 was not originally documented, which is funny. So we need to add these and set VF to 1 if there's a carry. I'm going to assume a carry means over 255 in this case for adding those two together, and it would wrap around. Okay, and I have those defined as as uint 8, so it will have unsigned int uh, overflow implicitly, which will wrap from 255 to 0, so that should be all right there. Let's do vx plus equal vy set vf to 1 if carry. So let's just set this plus equal, but we can do a little check here. Let's just yank the whole line there and paste it. So if we'll do a test, if this plus this is going to be greater than 255, which might not be able to be checked here. So let's say, let's cast it to a uint 16, that operation, which that needs to be like that. We'll just wrap all this up here. <laughs> this big conditional. My head's in the way, let me move that up. So if the result of adding the X and Y registers, the VX and VY registers, is going to be greater than 255, we should have a carry. So in that case, we'll set VF equal to 1. And we'll also add them. And because of implicit unsigned in overflow from C, this should be all right, and this should be what is expected. I could also set VF equal to this condition, but I don't want to unset the carry flag. I just want to set it if it's true. So, okay, that should be all right. And I will fill out the debug printing after I do all these. I just figure since they're all connected, we can do all the AOU ops together. 
So 5, 8xy, 5 is subtraction. V, Vy is subtracted from Vx, and the result in Vx. The Vf is used as a flag set to 0 when there is a borrow, and set to 1 when there is not a borrow. So if there is a borrow, that would be underflow. Yeah, it'd be like a negative result if that were to happen, but we have wraparound because I have them as unsigned ints. Um, if the result of subtracting Vy from Vx would be negative, so if Vy is greater than Vx, then that would count as a borrow, and we would not set Vf. However, if the result is positive and Vx is larger than Vy, then we would set a 1 because there would not be a borrow. So that's a little interesting. Usually the carry flag is not a not borrow flag, but that's just how they have it implemented. If you want a positive result, you set it. That's probably useful in some game programming way that I'm just not thinking of. But okay, yeah, we can do that. It's just a little wonky. So we'll say set register vx minus equal vy, set vf to one if there is not a borrow. Result is positive, we'll say, because that's what that means. I think, I think I have that right, but yeah. So we'll just do this stuff. Can check if it's negative since they're uint. Um, yeah, let's, I'll cast it to an int just in case. So if the subtraction of these results in a negative value, or instead of doing that, we can really just see if Vy is greater than Vx, and that would be the same thing, so I can do that. Let's do that. We'll say if the data in Y is greater than the data in X, then Y would be greater. Equal, it would be zero. That would not be a borrow, but greater it would be negative as the result of subtraction. That would be a borrow, then we'll set the carry flag, or the not borrow flag in this case. Okay. And then we'll have overflow, so underflow should wrap back to 255, that should be okay. We'll do the subtraction there. I think I have that right. <laughs> we'll see later. Just wanna get these here first, we can test. Vx is shifted by one. I mean, we can test right now, actually, just as a stopping point since I didn't declare Vf. That is true. Keep typing Vg. This needs to be chip eight V offset by F. That's what I meant. Okay. Let's see. Do I get through some of these? I won't get through all of the eight opcodes. What does nine first? So eight, or that's zero E. Okay, that's okay. So eight, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So six I'm not implementing, so that's correct. So that makes sense. Okay, so eight, one here would be eight X, Y, one, and eight X, Y, two. All right, that's how he's doing it. And then the F series, I'm not. One X is good. AX has a blank, which is interesting, but that's all right. And 9x I'm not doing, <laughs> but okay. So we have that seemingly correct so far. So we'll work on 8.6 and e, or 8.7 is one as well. Whatever I'm not doing, which is always forgetting that I do control Z and not just exit. Uh, okay. So let's do case six, zero x, eight x y, six. That is bit op, vx shifted right by one, stores the least significant bit of vx in vf. Okay, so that's shifting through the carry flag. And then shifts vx to the right by one. But these were undocumented originally. Originally they shifted vy and stored that in vx, but the super chip and chip 48 ignore vy and only do vx. So. Possibly depending on some games or ROMs we check later, this might be incorrect behavior. We could set like a configurable flag or something for super chip and chip eight um, emulation accuracy or something, which mode we want to emulate for instructions. That would be good to set configurable, I guess, for some of these. We might look at that later if I do super chip support. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll just do whatever this page says because that's the commonly used subset. We'll shift it by one, and whatever that bit is that was shifted off, I'll store in VF. If we need to do the different way, 
then we'll shift vy instead of vx. And vx will equal that. But right now, vx will equal itself divided by 2, and the bit will go in vf. So I'll just do that. Uh, okay, so set register vx, shifted right by 1, store shifted off bit in vf. vf. So we'll do that. So V offset by X, be shifted right by one or dividing by two effectively. But before I do that, I will store, I will store that bit in VF. So that can equal the value in VX handed with one. Yeah, that should be okay. So if, if the least significant bit, if it's like 10, which in binary is going to be 1010, right? 8 and 2. If we and that with 1, then it would only consider 0 or 1. It'd be the first bit. That's a 0. So VF would be 0. And it would shift right by 1, and it would equal um, 5, right? 10 divided by 2, 1 and 4. Okay, but if it was, say, 11, and we ended with 1, this would be a 1. VF would be equal to 1. And then we'd shift right, and we'd still get 5, <laughs> right? Because the bit's going to disappear, but that's okay. So that should work, just ending it with 1, and then doing that. Hopefully that works. I could have a dyslexic sort of situation, again, where I'm not reading <laughs> conditions correctly, of course. That always happens when I'm talking. So 8x7, 8xy7, math op, vx is vy minus vx which is different from this. Okay, so 8xy5 is vx minus vy, result in vx. This is vy minus vx, the result in vx. So it's the opposite thing there. Okay, so set vx to vy minus, vf is set to zero when there is a borrow and one when there's not a borrow. So again, it's the not borrow flag, but for the opposite subtraction from the registers. Okay, I can do that. We can do that. Set register VX equal VY minus VX. Set VF to one if there is not a borrow. Which means the result is positive. Why is my cursor up there? Go down here. I'll just do that. Okay, so really I can just, well, I can just copy this code, <laughs> actually, and change the condition. So this would be, if x is greater than y, if x is greater than y, there would not be a borrow. Wait, did I do this? Did I do this incorrectly? No, if y is greater than x, then it would be negative. But this needs to be set to 1 if there is not a borrow. So I think this was incorrect. That's incorrect. If y is greater than x, this would be negative, which would be a borrow. And we want it to set if there's not a borrow. So I think I got those reversed. But I might be confusing myself again. <laughs> uh, in this case, if x is greater than y, then this would be negative, and there would be a borrow. So I probably want to test the opposite. If it's less than or equal, well not equal, if it's less than. If x is less than y, then y minus x would be positive, and this would be not a borrow. Am I doing these right? <laughs> uh, if y is greater than x, this would be negative. Okay, so we can check. If y is less than x, less than or equal, really, it would be positive, and that would be set for not borrow. And then in this case, if x is less than or equal to y, it would be positive or zero, and there would not be a borrow. So let me do positive or zero. Okay. I think those were wrong before, and this would be closer to correct, hopefully. Maybe not. But we can do vy minus vx, 
which is v offset y minus v offset x. x equals y minus x, and this is x minus equal y. Okay, hopefully that's more correct. I didn't do that. What is it, what, 485? It's 385, 485. If I do chip, yeah, eight. That's 8xy7 is what that was. Um, so 6 has a no. I don't have 8, 7 here, so I can't test that. That doesn't really help me, does it? <laughs> That's okay. I don't know even where these would be up here anymore. Uh, well, there's an 8, 7 right there, unimplemented. Because I'm not doing debugging for those. That's true. Why would I try to look at it if I'm not doing debugging yet? Thought it did not even consider that. I wanted to do these first. Yeah, that, that was my condition. Right? Is this not? This should work, right? It said this was no. But I figure that would be correct. Eh, whatever. Let's do, um, let's do the last 8xy. We'll do this, which is the opposite, shifting left instead of right. And then we'll add the debugging, and then we'll, uh, we'll figure out what's wrong and what's not wrong. <laughs> So store the most significant bit of Vx and Vf, and then shift to the left. So instead of the least significant bit and shift to the right, most significant shift to the left. So multiply Vx by 2. That's what this is going to do. So 8xye. Register VX shift left equal by one, store shifted off bit and VF. So chip eight V offset F. This won't be anded by one. This be a little different. We know it's only eight bits wide, however. So we can AND with 80, I believe, right? You know, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So that would isolate the top bit here, and the other ones would be set to 0. So we can do that, and then we can, like, shift left by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, if we wanted that. If I really want to ensure that it's only that value, because it, it, it doesn't need to be the value 80, it needs to be 0 or 1, right? So yeah, I should do that. So isolate the top bit and then shift to the right to only get that bit there. All right, otherwise we offset by X and shift to the left by one, multiplying it by two. So that was the switch with the break. So let's grab all of this, all of these sort of AOU ops and Put them up in the debug thing here. So let's say set register 8xy0, set vx equal to v percent x for y, and also do that. The vx doesn't really matter what this value is here, but I can, yeah, we'll just get rid of that. Because we're setting it equal to vy, which is this value. So we'll get instruction x, and that will equal instruction y, which will have the value of v offset by instruction y. Okay. We don't need equal, we need comma. All right, and this would be ORD equal. This one I might set the result, because we will need X, Y, and this, but this will be OR. So let's do, let's do that. Let's do percent %O2X, just to check it for debugging, ORD with this. So let's say result 
percent O two X. So we'll have X, we'll have the data at X, which is V offset by that. We'll have Y, we'll have the data offset by Y. And then we'll have the results, which will be V offset by X or with V offset by Y. So we will order them together. We're just want, we just won't be setting that value. Okay. And that should give the result there. Hopefully. Two will be the same thing, except it will be and. Anding. Three will be XORing. So I should really use F for find for this, right? Get a little bit better in Vim over time. We'll XOR those, and then we'll add them here. So set VX plus equal VY. We'll have the result. Say VF. Oh, don't do that. Say VF equals one if carry. So let's have result will be this and VF equals, you know, zero or one, we'll say. Okay, so we'll have X and the value in X, Y the value in Y. We'll have the result of adding these two, so VX plus VY. And then we'll have the conditional here. Which we'll test if, well, it won't be if, we'll test the conditional. The conditional would be this plus this, mark off print F. Is it greater? How do we know if it's carry? Carry would be if Y, if, um, if it overflows, yeah. So if, if added together, it's greater than 255. So again, I'll do the UN16 thing there. This is a bit jank, right? Doesn't it look a bit jank? That's okay. Get my face out of the way if you couldn't see. So we're taking the X and the Y values. I'm adding them to get the result. And to check if the flag would be set, I'm going to return the value of sort of the Boolean, the, the conditional here, if adding them is greater than 255. Same thing for the instruction. I'm just putting it here without an if so that it will return the int 0 or 1 from evaluating that which I think is how that should work. Again, we'll see. We'll just uh, compile without <laughs> checking if the values will, uh, will work or not. This would be negative VX, or no, VF equals one if no borrow. So we'll do the result and we'll have VF. The result here would be subtracting. Subtracting no borrow result is positive or zero. That would be checking again if one is greater, right? Which I did, I don't remember. <laughs> if y is less than or equal to x, okay. Assuming that's correct, that might be opposite and wrong and I was reading it wrong again, but that's all right. So let's just compare if y is less than or equal to x. Then VX minus VY would be positive or zero, so that should be okay. And here we'll shift over. I'll have the result equal this, and then VF will be the shifted off bit. Let's do VF equals shifted off bits. Yeah, let's just do percent %x, which will be 0 or 1. And then we'll do the result normally. Let's do that. Along with the new line. Okay, so we'll have x and x. Don't need y. We'll do x shifted by 1, which that will be the result. 
the shifted off bit. So that was the least significant bit, which is V offset by X anded with one, right? Yeah. So we'll take anded with one and then shift it for that result. Okay. Which is not seven, seven is a subtraction. So let's copy this one. So VX will equal, let's just put this, we'll do VX equal VX minus VY, which would be percent X, zero X percent O two X. VX equals VY minus VX and VF equals one if no borrow. And then I'll have the result in VF, okay. Which is about going off the screen. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do X twice. No, it's VY minus VX. This is VY and VX, okay. So I'll do X, we'll do Y, and we'll do offset by Y, then we'll have VX, then offset by X for that value. And the result will be Y minus X. And VF will be set, if the result is positive, Y minus X, that would mean X is less than or equal to Y. Yeah, I really can't do conditionals today, yeah. <laughs> if X is less than or equal to Y, the result would be positive, which would be no borrow, and that would be one. So for five, if Y is less than or equal to X, that's true. But this one I think might have been wrong. X is less than or equal to Y, yeah. Okay, I'll have to recheck that in the regular calculations. So sorry if that's annoying that I keep going back and forth and getting things wrong. It's hard to think and talk at the same time when I can't do either very well. So, okay. So this one will be the opposite shift. VF equals the shifted off bit. So this would be this way and this would be anded with 80. And shift right by seven just to get the zero or one. Okay. So let's go back to this down here. If VY is less than or equal to VX, sorry, this needs to be X. If VY, yep, is less than or equal to X, then that would be positive. Otherwise, here, if VX is less than or equal to Y, no, I did that right, then Y minus X. Okay, so am I doing Y minus X for this? Y minus X, okay. All right, let's see what we messed up. I did chip instead of chip eight, which I probably, that's because I like copied the code there. So line 580 here, just made that chip eight. There we go. Let's run it for test stop code and see, did we mess up all the eight sort of class of algs there? Oh, it looks like those are all okay. So that's good. The Fs are wrong, but the other ones, those are okay. So that's good. Um, actually, I should, I should see if the debug output looks okay. So let's do that. So let's see, we executed some eights over here. I mean, here's one, but it's not eight zero, eight seven, which sets registers. That doesn't seem right. Don't think that's right. Why is this saying, I don't wanna do, did I press some weird thing? Leave full screen. Oh, that's in my, uh, that was in my window. Okay, <laughs> whatever. Do I not have the eights like all the way? That doesn't, this one is right, eight, seven, six, two. Set it and equal, eight, seven, B one, or equal. Those look to be correct. I don't think 8750 is correct. That looks weird. Actually, it could be. It could be correct, actually. No, that does assign. Never mind. Never mind. Ends in a zero, it does do with the assignment. I am incorrect. Okay. So I, I think those are reasonably correct. Um, we can check the BC test. 
see if we get a different error code. It's the same one, unimplemented, probably because the Fs. Okay, that's all right. I just want to make sure it's reasonably correct. Um, 9xy, skip if the next instruction, if this doesn't equal, that's for branching as well. Probably want to do that. We can do that next. So we'll do here, we'll do case, because these are all eights, right? Eights, yeah. So x, y, n, what is it? x, y, zero. So this is check if vx not equal vy. Skip the next instruction. Not equal vy. Skip next instruction if so. So if v offset by x does not equal v offset by y, then increment the program counter. Ins instruction, that's not spelled correctly. Instruction, there we go. Um, I think I did something similar up here. That was in the threes, right? Yeah, we'll just do like this. It's the opposite of five. Okay. Or sort of the inverse. Not the opposite, but you know. Check if vx does not equal vy. That's x, x, and y, and y. Next instruction if true. Okay. Did the test op code have the 9x? I forget. I think it did have a 9x, right? Here we go. 9x is okay. All right, so that one's good, approximately. Okay, A, N, 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 I believe we're doing A, we are. So B, N, 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 program counter is V0 plus N, 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 jumps to that address. See, what would be helpful here is if they had this, um, say, program counter equals and then go to or something. This is the only part where they put that in where you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I have a program counter, I set it equal to that, but yeah. <laughs> Process and data flow instruction. Okay, B, triple N, program counter equals V0 plus that. Jumps to that address. Okay. Uh, jump to V0, which is interesting. V0 plus NNN. Is that that's how it was originally? I guess it was. Yeah, go to zero plus V zero. Okay. So we have a plus, or sorry, we, we have an N and N plus zero, effectively. We have just a one, which goes directly, or call the subroutine directly, but we also have like an indirect jump through V zero, which is interesting because we don't have one for the subroutine there. That's, that's interesting that they did that, but okay, just a few different jumps. So the program counter, and I'm assuming this can wrap around too, implicitly, whether that's good or not. But that would be the top address. So I'm assuming games and programs don't mess with that. They keep it w well within range. Because the program counter can be like 12 bits <laughs> or 16, not just eight. So I'm interested because this is 12 bits plus an eight bit value that could overflow a 12 bit value. That's maybe they can use it for that. That's how they address more memory by doing this. That would make sense because this wouldn't necessarily overflow. It would just go into a larger address space. Yeah, that might be why this is useful. So we'll set this to chip 8v, we'll just do zero plus instruction and then in. I like it when they write themselves because <laughs> good documentation is important. It's like pseudocode, uh, print debug down here, skipped it. Oh, this is in pseudo. Did I not do the regular one? Oh my, I'm getting confused. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Set V to V0 plus NNN. Now let's do the V0 value. Percent. Oh, 2x. 
plus NNN, which is percent 04x. Yeah. Okay. We'll do the value at V0, which would be this. And we'll say, I'll say this, we, we can have the result. Result PC equals percent of 4x. So we'll have V0, we'll have N and N, and we'll have the result, which will be chip 8 V0 plus chip 8 destruction N and N. Okay. So did I not put that down where we're actually doing the instruction? Did I just write it there? I did. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> we'll have V0 plus NNN here. Forgot where it was because they are the same thing effectively in the code. Expected right paren, 437, that's true. To end off the printf there. There we go. So that is B. I don't think test opcode tests um, B, does it? I saw an A, like we have A, which is correct, but whatever. This doesn't have B on it. So I'm not sure it does test that. And the BC test doesn't, it just, uh, gives us an error because we don't have the F1s implemented. It looks like. So that's kind of lame, but I'm going to hope that we have that stuff all right. I should write my own test op code, I think. Test op code ROM to test these instructions because they aren't being tested, but uh, sure, okay. Yeah, I mean, I could write the output. I could test the opcode and write the output to log, right? And then run it for a bit till it's done. All right, and then we can grep log and look for, um, you know, like the program counter. Oh, we didn't find it. <laughs> so we have all this stuff here. So what if I... Oh, and yeah, I did control D, which ends the session. Yeah, that's always fun. I just have a black screen there. Oh, that's always fun. I have YouTube under here, yep. And chip eight, okay. So we're, we're here. All right. So I thought it was, you grip for the option and then the file. Yeah, so can we not grip for like 0xb? We just don't have that at all? Is that just not, not going to be in there? Can I grip for anything? Does the address show up? Jump to address. I have to do that for the address, yeah. Okay, whatever. I'll think about better logging <laughs> later. I guess we're not using that, that instruction at all for 0x. B in and in, but okay, that's fine. That's that's in there emulated and it's in the debug output, so okay. CX and in random. Alright, well, it's been like a little bit of an hour or over an hour here, so I'm going to end this video here. Sorry it's boring. I'm just going through and implementing things and talking badly and misreading instructions and things, and I'll get my infinite loop off the screen. <laughs> but we got we got a good bit done, a good bit uh, emulated so far that we're testing. I can try a game right quick, not that we'll actually be able to play much of anything because we don't have input yet, but uh, we can test games here, right? I do programs, I called it ROMs, games. So can we even display something like... Um, I could have sworn we had Tetris. Yeah, we do. Can we display something like Tetris? Does it even draw? I mean, it would draw extremely slowly because, well, it doesn't draw that slow. We're only emulating one instruction per frame. So it's going to go very slowly down the screen. At least we draw it, and then it waits and then redraw. <laughs> oh, it takes forever. Oh, that's not really quite correct either. There we go. 
So we don't have input, right? So we're not going to move the thing other than space. We can draw something. We can't interact with it yet. So I'll try to get the rest of these instructions done. I'll try to get the rest of these instructions done on the next video so we can at least get these done in, as well as input. And we can go on to sound support if we get that done within like an hour. So if not, then it'll be another video, but that's all right. I'm trying to keep these less than two hours, so it uh, takes me a lot less time to edit and upload and stuff. So, okay. The next time we'll start off with the random instruction. We already did display, and we'll do the key ops and timers and sound and BCD and register dumps. Then we'll go on to input keypad support. Um, try to get games playing. So I'll aim for that on the next video. If we get that far, we'll do sound. Otherwise, on the video after the next one, we'll get the sound going and set the timing better so that input and sound and games work. So I'll aim for that. Past that, we might do like maybe super chip extensions, or if the display flickers too much, we can look at fixing that and other things. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. This one was a, a bit more boring, just going through instruction by instruction. Sorry about that, but that is how it is. That's implementation work <laughs> for these things. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. So, cheers.